Good afternoon. So back on Dartmoor. We've already had one walk today with a lovely walking group over at Sarreton up on the tour. Go over there, fabulous views. But today I'm out with this one. Hi. <laughs> First she's, time this year. She's back. <laughs> and we're back out on Dartmoor. We're going to well, that way. I've been thinking lately that maybe we shouldn't always tell you where we're going, but it's no secret, we're going to Dinger Tour. And camp there for the night, and we'll be back in the morning, and then we're off back to Gloucestershire. And unbelievably, as you can see, it's a beautiful day. Absolutely beautiful, to the point where I think I've already got a sunburnt nose, after all the weather we've had. Anyway, we're going this way. Feel free to come with us. <laughs> yeah, it's a beautiful day. Mm. So, oh, first camp then. First camp at year. Let's see how far we got to go. Not far, I think. It's just gone five. Yeah. Oh, it's quite a way. It's another two kilometres. So, a mile and a quarter. Mile and a quarter. You okay? Yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. Not sorry you came. Yeah. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> so this is Dinger Tour, where we were aiming to camp, but change of plan. But just as we got here, the sun went in, the clouds are coming over, the wind is very cold and there's no one there the other side out of the wind where we can camp. So we're going to wander on down to Lint's Tor, down in the valley here, and uh, try down there. That should be less windy, with a bit of luck. But uh, yeah, it's Lynn's first night out this year and we don't want to be battling a cold wind so we'll just have a half a mile more walking try and get out the wind okay so we're on Lint's tour we've had a bit of kerfuffle thought we hadn't brought the pegs for a minute <laughs> but they weren't like inside the liner of the bag they were outside so anyway we did have the pegs and we've put her up and there she is so there's Lynn huddling in the tent. <laughs> Let me show you where she is. So as you can see, it's the X mid 2P as usual. And there is the top of Lynn's tour. And over here, I don't know if you can see this, but that's Fordland's Ledge and High Wilhays. And Dinger Tour, where we aim to camp, is, is just over there. But we decided it was too windy. We've come down here. We've not got the most brilliant pitch in the world. It's a bit on the wet side, but it is out of the wind, which is important. We've got a lovely mackerel sky. So we're going to get in the tent, huddle down for a bit, and get the kettle on, have a brew. I'll catch up with you in a bit. So we're on Lint's tour, um, having moved down here from Dinger tour, where the wind was uh, just too strong really and nowhere to get out of it and I basically I didn't want Lynn having a windy camp first out the gate you know so uh, let me just show you where we are so on on the horizon there you've got black tour halfway up the hill at the top is yes tour and there's a little bump on there which is high will haze the highest point of Dartmoor coming round the other little bump there, that's Dinger Tor. 
And then you've got this wide, wide expanse of the North Moor going all the way around. This rock here is, this is Lintz Tor rock. And then behind there is uh, it's Great Lynx, I think. Unfortunately, because of the wind is blowing in this direction towards the camera here, there's lots of great pitches here, but they're all in the wind. It's about half seven now. The sunset is due about 20 past eight. I'm gonna get uh, dinner on, I think. So we've, we've parked down behind this rock here, uh, out of the wind. It looks a bit weird at the moment because it's in porch mode. So there's the Durston Exmid 2P, and we've got one of the doors held up with a trekking pole to make a porch. As you can see, it's down there, it's hardly moving, it's out of the wind. Dinner for Stop the... Shh, hang on. Sorry. There's a method to this. <laughs> you come sit by me, dear. <laughs> we have Ben's plant-powered tikka masala with steamed, filtered, perfectly fragrant rice. And we've invested in a little wooden spoon so that we don't scrape all the non-stick off our new saucepan. Actually, an inherited saucepan. Yeah. So, well, I think what we do, we just chuck it all in together. Yeah? Yeah. And cook. Yeah. Okay, uh, just to let you know, um, not got the alcohol stove. I've got this uh, Jetboil knockoff Planet X, which is fine for me. It's not what anyone might think. It's not a Jetboil killer, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Right, okay, wooden spoon, and then stir it all in together. It's the best way to do it. The nice thing about this is we've not had to carry up any water to cook it. And because the wife's here, or you've even bought some bowls to eat it out of, <laughs> trying to be a little posher than normal. I can recommend this, Ben's plant-powered tikka masala. Yeah. We nearly said chicken. You've got, you got some on your tin, dear. Have I? Yeah. Oh. Got oh, it yeah. on your finger now. <laughs> I'm going to hold this so in case Linda wants to speak. <laughs> <laughs> might say something. You might say something. Might We're not. just eating one of our lovely energy bars. With a cup of coffee. With a cup of coffee. And chewing the cut. Well, chewing the energy bar, really. So, as you know, we said we were going to try and camp on Dinger Tour, but we couldn't do that in the end because of the wind. Well, we could, but mm, it's, it's, I mean, the wind is quite strong. It's like 20 foot away up there, but we're behind the rock, so. Yeah, it's okay here. Who needs wind? Um, when we knew we were going to camp on Dinger Tour, I sort of read into the thing and discovered that Dinger Tour was where the last giant of... Devon lived, a giant called Blunderbuss. Right. Or Moran. Blunderbuss sounds better. Most stories say Blunderbuss, mm. a couple say Moran. No, anyway, he was the last giant in, in Devon. Um, at one time, there was, well, at one time, giants lived all over Devon. And then, after the Trojan Wars, the Trojans arrived, tried to take over. And they came to an arrangement where the Giants champion would fight the Trojan champion for Devon. Right. On Plymouth Hull. And unfortunately the Trojan won. Mm -hmm. When he picked up the giant, takes a bit believing, <laughs> yeah. and threw him off the hoe, Plymouth Hoe, onto mm. the rocks and killed him. Right. At which point all the other giants fled. Don't blame them. A lot of them down into Cornwall. And the rest up onto the tours on Dartmoor. So each tour had its own giant. And over time, they they, they died out. The mm. last one was Blunderbuss right. on Dinger Tour. Why he chose Dinger Tour, 
a windy old spot. You'd have thought you'd have moved to a better one when somebody died, wouldn't you? Mm, yeah. But you didn't. You lived on Dingatora. And he had four wives, three who were quite good at housework and cooking and all that st sort of stuff. One who wasn't, but was young and very beautiful, called Jenny. And she was his favourite. Right. Right. And the other three got the ump over that, didn't like it. Because mm -hmm. she basically was useless around the house. Yeah. Not pulling her weight, as they say. Nope. But she was the boss's favourite. So eventually they had enough of this. <laughs> Dropping your dinner on down your front. <laughs> and gave Blunderbuss an ultimatum. If you don't get rid of her, we're going to stop looking after you. Right. And he wouldn't get rid of her. So, <clears throat> so they stopped doing the cooking. Didn't cook him anything decent. Didn't wash his clothes. Didn't clean the house. And eventually he got so fed up of everything being filthy and horrible, he sent Jenny down to a castle on the coast of Cornwall. Right. And they used to communicate with little letters, little love letters. Oh, sweet. Probably sent by messenger pigeon or... Mm, yeah. Who knows? Giant male. Um, and then things at, back at Dinger Tour sort of reverted to normal, except Blunderbuss is just miserable because he hasn't got oh, his Jenny, like. right? And she's locked in this castle in Cornwall on, on the coast. And then one day, or well, night, sorry, she sees the wreckers getting ready to lure, lure a ship onto the rocks on mm. the coast using what they call a hobbled donkey. Mm. Then the hobbled donkey was doing what? Well, the thing is, they tied up one of his legs so mm. he couldn't walk properly. Mm. And then they sort of guided it along the cliff, and it, the light on it put a light on its back, and the light would sort of go up and down as though it was a ship. Ah, oh, right. And so it would lure the other ship onto the rocks. Mm. Yeah. So she saw this happening, and decided she wanted to stop this. So she took her shirt off and waved it like mad out to the window. Mm -hmm. And the captain of the ship, which is a Phoenician trading ship, mm. um saw this half-naked woman waving her shirt at him, mm. realised what was going on, sent mm. the boys over to kill the wreckers. And then he went up to see what was going on, mm. you know. Found himself a beautiful young woman with her shirt off. She had on by then. Which she put it back on by the time he got there. Anyway, they, um, he asked her what she was doing locked up in a castle in Cornwall, and she explained the story to him. Mm. And he said, I'll tell you what I'll do, because you saved our lives, I'll teach you our secret recipe right. that, like, nobody can resist and that will get you back into Blunderbuss's favours. Yeah? Okay. So mm -hmm. he taught her this recipe. She sent a message off to Blunderbuss and said, look, I've got this food. I know how to cook and mm. it's wonderful. Mm. So he said, right, I'll have you back up here. You cook it for me. If it's good enough, I'll tell the other three where to get boss, mm. basically. And that's what they did. So she came up, took the food, gave it to the three women in Blunderbuss. They all thought it was fantastic. Mm -hmm. And then they lived happily ever after. Okay, and what was the food? Ah, the food apparently was clotted cream. Oh, right. And she served it on scones, mm -hmm. or scones, scones, and topped it with raspberry jam. All oh, right. So there you go, Devon cream tea. And then the Cornish thought, this isn't right. And they took the recipe and put the jam on first and then yeah. the cream on top. It's even burgers. <laughs> well, the Cornish do say it's theirs, really. <laughs> well, I mean, we know better now. <laughs> it was invented by in Phoenicia. What was, where was Phoenicia? I don't know. It was invented there mm. and came, so hence the Devon cream tea. So there you go. There you go. A nice tall tail. Uh, I don't know. It sounds, you know, <laughs> there's <giants>. dumber tails. <laughs> yeah. So Good story. Blunderbuss the Giant. <laughs> he must have had a very drafty castle from what we've seen today. <laughs> yeah, it was a bit blowy up there, so yeah. at least. There's a lot of history down here. Mm. A lot. Is it, I, I'm guessing there's a lot of history in the Brecon Beacons where we go. But, it's but it's, it's very, it seems very difficult to find it. Yeah, it's it. not really documented, is it? No, down here there's stories all over the place. Mm. So, you know, and there's all these stone circles and... Villages, the stone rows, and yeah, and burial cairns, and the lot. Mm. You know, a lot, a long, long history of habit, habitation that yeah. there's still evidence of. Mm. 
definitely. I haven't seen any giants, though. No. No. Hopefully we won't see one. <laughs> well, you know. There might still be some hiding in Cornwall. Got our pyjamas on. Yeah. PJs. PJs. Got my hat on still. Yeah. It's cold. It's about, I don't know what time half it is. We 11. just Yeah, about half eleven. We've just been listening to a Dan Snow podcast about the aftermath of plagues. Yeah, and pandemics. And pandemics, which was okay until they had some really silly adverts in the middle. Yep. Yeah. But uh, Not very... Ex- Quite a depressing thing to listen to. Yeah, honestly. so we shouldn't have done that. No, the only one you had. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, it's, oh, as I said, it's half eleven time we went to bed. Yeah, yeah. Wind's got up a bit again. Yeah, the wind comes and goes, doesn't it? Yeah. But, uh, not too bad. Yeah. Anyway, we'll see you in the morning. Yeah, good night. Night. <laughs> right, good morning. Good morning. Oh, it's cold. It was a windy night. Oh, it wasn't that windy. I mean, it was windy, but windy. not here. No. <laughs> <laughs> right, so we'll just show you the view, or lack of, and then we'll get the coffee on. So there you go. Not the best view in the world. It's just gone half seven. Just gone half seven. We just got up, done a little bit of packing away, and now we're going to get some coffee, eat our yogurts. Yeah, that's clear in it. Gormous yeah, it's sort it comes of it, and goes, doesn't it? Yeah, it varies between like 40 yards of visibility and 100 yards. Yeah. <laughs> okay, ah, we'll get the coffee on. I can't, I can't remember whether it's supposed to clear or not, but we've got no service here, no, so. Can't, can't look it up. It's definitely clear because that's the way we got to go. Is it? Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah. Mm. I was thinking it, yeah, well, what do I know? That's us packed up. We'll show you that we've left no trace. That's where we were. It's cold. I just had to repack my bag because I managed to put my gloves in the bottom of it because I'm an idiot. So that's our way back. You can see that it's lifted a bit and then we've got to go up into these clouds that are rushing by down over the other side of that ridge. Let's get going. Back down to uh, cook breakfast somewhere, I think. Yeah, I think we deserve it today. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll catch up with you in a bit. Back at dinner tour. No sign of any giants. <laughs> Thankfully. Let's get out of here for the giant mightings up. Oh, I might be able to see Jenny. That would be nice. So all we got to do now is follow this road back, such as it is. I think we'll try and get right down in the valley, get us out of the wind as much as we can. You reckon? Yeah. We can see the car now at the end we of the can. road. Yeah. So we're going to wrap it up here. <laughs> well, welcome back to Wild Camping, Linda. Thank you. Hopefully next time it'll be a bit wind. warmer. Not quite so windy. Not so windy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Stay safe out there. We hope to see you in the next one. Okay. Bye. Bye.